We're gonna head down to the theater now. They are doing the Veterans event, because it's Veterans Day. I mean, they do it every cruise, but it's Veterans Day. And we got about 10 minutes until the event, and look at this turnout. I knew it was gonna be a popular one. Heck yeah. This room has got potential to be full for this event, as it should be, right? As it should be. But I need your help. A round of applause, who believes that military is a little bit like a family? Round of applause for that, right? And if you truly believe that, if you see people walking around, if there are two random seats next to you, maybe squeeze so that other people can squeeze in these gaps. This is what a military appreciation should look like! Mardi Gras family, look around the room! Because these are the most awesome people we have on board. I just gave up, I'm still backstage, I want singles backstage. <laughs> I said earlier, unless we fill this theater, I was gonna keep playing the song Baby Shark on a loop. <laughs> I hope that that is the reason why, uh, I hope that's not the reason why you're here and you're actually here because this is, and it will always be, the first ever Veterans Day military appreciation on the Mardi Gras. And you are here. And, um, this looks amazing, doesn't it? Like, this is what it's all about. Uh, I am, uh, it makes me feel emotional, I haven't even started yet. Now, um, let me start by saying something important. Um, this, this, this day is very special. Um, there is always a, a big conversation, there is a difference between Veterans Day and Memorial Day. There is a difference. This is a day where we uh, celebrate all the veterans that are here in the room with us, all the veterans around the world, all the veterans that are out there serving right now. This is a celebration of those veterans. I am... Um, this is a significant day worldwide as well. Uh, this is known as Armistice Day or Remembrance Day for, uh, for a lot of people as well. And I'd like to mention that because this event is out here to say thank you, to say we appreciate you, send love. And if you've ever been to a military appreciation event with me before, and let's, you know what, let's even forget about that. Let's just say about the elephant in the room. There is a lot of you in here right now that are going, wait a minute, we're on the Mardi Gras. This ship is the flagship of America's cruise line. We are sailing out of America on the cruise line that has more active and retired military people cruising with them than any other cruise ship in the world. And the, and the military appreciation event is being hosted by an Englishman. Because <laughs> yeah. you know what? There is nobody else I would give this microphone to. This is an event that is very near and dear to me. To me. I literally, when I say, and lots of you would have maybe even been stationed at the military base I look out of my bedroom window at, REF Greenham Common is literally out of my bedroom window. Many of you might have been stationed there. I always like to make the same thing. I am from England, um, but this is, a, this, is, this is a special day. Um, this is a day when I grew up. <laughs> when, it, when it was today, back home, everything stops at 11 a.m. I'm not gonna lie, I got a little bit emotional when the power went out today. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Just after 11 a.m., yeah. the, we, there's a moment of silence, and there is forcing a moment of silence, right? <laughs> I, uh, is, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say I planned it, but I'm not gonna say I'm upset about it. That was. Um, back home, we uh, we'd always have a Remembrance Day parade. We'd always pause on this day. We would. I was a Boy Scout growing up, and. Uh, my dad would always say, hey, on this day, you better be the person holding the flag for Remembrance Day, right? Like, that's the household I grew up with. Um, I, when I was growing up, I had both sets of my grandparents. We still got a few seats at the side here as well. If you're in seventh or final seat, trust me, people want to sit next to you for this one. This is a special event. We are America's Cruise Line, and this is a military appreciation event, and there is only one appropriate way to start off a military appreciation event here on Veterans Day. So at this time, I'm going to invite out Sophia. And at this time, please, Mardi Gras family will begin this event with the National Anthem. Who's brought stripes and bright stars? I'm going to 
my latest branch of the military, what I'd do, I would encourage people from that branch of the military to stand up. I will get them to look around the room and see who else is standing. We often have connections that are found at an event, and with this many people here, I feel like that could happen again. Let them look around the room. I have had a military appreciation event with me two weeks ago, two people that served together before. I've also had a few, a few years ago now, but it was still such an amazing story. Two people who came here, one person was on this side, and he stood up, he was sadly cruising on his own. Sadly, he wasn't being able to cruise with his wife. He was there on his own, cruising on his own, but he still came out to cruise. On the other side, a gentleman stood up, they looked across the room, and at the end they came and found me, because these two guys that were there served together like 30, 40 years before. And then they got to see each other on that cruise, and I, they go to military appreciation events and they talk about the fact they bumped into each other to tell the cruise director to tell me that they're still cruising together, which makes it it's just, it's special. If we're going to be honest, the person I found sorry for that cruise was this person's wife, because at that point, she just didn't see her husband the rest of the cruise. But those connections do happen, and in all seriousness, they do. And this is all about making someone feel good. It shouldn't be the case. It shouldn't be the case, but a lot of people that are probably in this room today did not receive any appreciation when they came home. They did not receive a welcome home. They did not receive any love and thanks. And you have the ability today to change that, to know that no one sat anywhere near you will ever have that problem again because you have the ability to turn to that person, tell them thank you for their service, tell them welcome home, tell them that they are appreciated. That's what you can do today and that is the most powerful thing. So I would get the person from the people from that branch of the military to stand up. After a little while, I will then ask all of you, do you appreciate the people standing? And at that point, that is your moment to stand up, scream, shout, throw your children in the air, turn to those people standing, turn to them and tell them thank you, tell them you appreciate it. Let them know, turn to your left, turn to your right, move down the aisle, get out there, because this is Veterans Day, and if there was ever a day that you could make sure people feel that appreciation, now is the time to do it. That's what we're here for today, to make sure we share that appreciation. And then we go to the next branch of the military and we're going to keep going through sending that love throughout this room. So let's please send some extra love out here to the United States Public Health Service and National Oceanic and Atmospheric, <laughs> Atmospheric Administration First Responders and other uniform service members, civilian personnel, the National Guard, the Air National Guard. Let's show some love for them. Is there any World War II veterans in the house today? Any here today. Yeah. That moment there, firstly, makes me realize how old my granddad is. But secondly, is a, a little bit of a reminder that we haven't got much time to keep saying thank you to that, uh, that group of people. And I, I mention it all the time, and I know I'm preaching to the choir saying it in this room, but if you do see someone in that World War II hat, to think about this moment, because it might be the last time she might have a chance to go over and say thanks. The most emotive, and I get emotional at this event. Like, if you've been to this event before, you, you, I get emotional, right? I do. But the most emotional I've ever been is we had, uh, I was at Galveston, Texas, and we had a, a World War II veteran here, and there was a bunch of, it was, it was before the lockdown, there was some kids here out of Texas like this. Everyone drags their kids out there as well to do this. and. It's a, it's a special moment, but anyway, I'm stood at the front, the World War II veteran was at the front, and at the end, all of a sudden, all the kids started walking around the, around the side of the theatre, because two Marines had stood at the back, sent all of the kids back down the stairs to go and shake the hand of the, Maria, the, uh, the World War II veteran. And uh, it, it was like one person, it makes me get emotional thinking about it, because they want to make sure they had a chance to shake that person by the hand. Uh, it really is something special. Now this is our Veterans Day Military Appreciation event. That's, that's the name of this. And if we can't show a little bit more appreciation to the people that receive the least, I think we're in the wrong place. So let's talk about that a second. One of the most moving times, I've had a lot of moving times hosting this for so many years, but one of the most moving times was someone saying to me, uh, 
until they came to this, they had their uniform stored in their cupboard, they hid it away because the way they were treated when they came home. They said they wouldn't put it on again. And when you hear what this person went through, you probably aren't that surprised. This person went away to serve his country, be away from his families and loved ones, and did all his good when he was away. As soon as he got back, back on American soil, first thing that happened was somebody, some idiot, and I say idiot, and you know he could, could be an idiot on stage, but I will say idiot, threw a rock at this gentleman that just was away from his family and loved ones, hit him with a rock, and before he could even give the person he loves a cuddle, he had to go straight to the hospital, and that was the welcome home he got. When people say that people didn't get a welcome home, that's not like not saying they didn't get one, they got less than one. That isn't, that isn't not getting one. That's worse. The amount of people that have come up to me and say they got spat on after being away from their family and loved ones serving their country is messed up. We right now, I need you to make sure that when this next group of people stand up, you keep that in mind. You look where they are stood. And that's why I need you not to stand up until I give you that cue. Look where they're stood. Let them have a moment to see where I stood next to them and work out where you are going to walk, to walk up to that person and tell them welcome home. Tell them they are appreciated, tell them thank you. And do it in such a way as you can imagine they might have never been told thank you before. That's why we're here today at a military appreciation event, to make sure everyone feels that appreciation and love. At this time, if there are any Vietnam veterans in the, in the room, please do stand up. Look, look at that is a lot of people. Look around the room. One thing we always need to, especially on Veterans Day, is make sure we uh, remember there are veterans there. Uh, no matter when you served, how long you served, what you did, you all made a difference. Everybody, no matter what. And it isn't, it isn't a competition. It's everyone's fighting that same fight. Everyone's doing that same thing. And um, I know back in the UK right now and in the US, um, PTSD is a, is a huge conversation party. Uh, I, I, uh, I had someone very, very close uh, to us, me, us, I'm the only person to do it, but um, that um, sadly uh, took his own life as a PTSD. Uh, I wasn't expecting, I host this every week, you sometimes don't see it. You don't. But you know what anyone that has out there and has served deserves a uh, to know that they're loved. And if you can get home, even if everybody in this room can call one person that they know has served and just tell them they're appreciated and they're loved and just say hi, it can go a, it can go a really wrong way. Because I tell you what, sometimes you, you just don't know what people are going through or what's happening. Uh, that's a bit of a side, that's Mike, Mike, not Mike Cruz director, that's just something for me. We really have to make sure we share love and respect and care to all of our veterans. Um, this is, of course, an event, because this, is, this isn't Memorial Day, this is Veterans Day. But it would be very inappropriate in an event like this to not have a short moment of silence to think about all the people that are not here today. All the people that have paid the ultimate price so we can live the way we live. Think about all the people that are out there serving right now and think about their families and loved ones. Whatever you wish to think about during a moment of silence, we, um, we encourage you to do it. The only thing I would like is that at the end of a moment of silence, please just turn to someone or anyone around you and just tell them thank you again, tell them they're appreciated, give them some acknowledgement, just whatever it is. Because a moment of silence in an event like this is is a very hard thing for many people. It is for me, I'm sure it might be for a few of you too. And having that someone, even if you don't know, I'm just tapping you on the shoulder and say you're appreciated, really does go a long way. Some people like to sit for a moment of silence, some people like to stand. There is, there is no standard on that. But at this time, I would like everybody in this room to please to take a pause, reflection, and have a moment of silence. Thank you. 
I'm Christine Duffy, president of Carnival Cruise Line, and I would like to thank you, not only for cruising with us, but for attending this special tribute we put together to honor those who have served or are currently serving in our military. Military service is very near and dear to me personally, as my father and all of my uncles served in the U.S. Armed Forces. My dad was in the Army, and my three uncles served in the U.S. Air Force, Navy, and Marines. My stepfather was a Green Beret, and now our son Sean, who I'm so proud of, is currently in law school and planning to join the service as a JAG when he graduates. I have personally witnessed the honor and dedication of military men and women and the sacrifices made by their families, and I am humbled by those who are willing to give so much to preserve and protect our freedoms. At Carnival Cruise Line, we have been a big supporter of military families, and I am very proud to say that we carry more active and retired military personnel than any other cruise line in the world. My first official event as president of Carnival was in February of 2015, where I had the opportunity to be in Galveston, Texas to commemorate the start of cruises on Carnival Freedom. During this special celebration featuring country music star Martina McBride, we kicked off our partnership with Operation Homefront. This partnership has endured and we have continued to provide charitable support to Operation Homefront. Their mission is to build strong, stable, and secure military families so they can thrive in the communities they have worked so hard to protect for us. With more than 3,200 volunteers nationwide, Operation Homefront provides assistance to military families through food and housing, as well as a variety of financial aid services. With Operation Homefront and country music superstar Carrie Underwood, we introduced our Honor Family Fund program. This was a year-long program that not only raised funds for Operation Homefront, but we were able to give many military families the opportunity to sail with us on Carnival Vista and attend Carrie's concerts. We also chose Deshauna Barber as the godmother of Carnival Vista. Deshauna is the first active duty U.S. military officer to wear the Miss USA crown. I had the privilege of spending time with Deshauna during the naming ceremony in New York, and she is truly an extraordinary young woman. During the ceremony, she spoke about her time in the military, the importance of supporting our servicemen and women, and how important it is to spend time with our loved ones. Let's take a look. I am humbled and proud and honored and inspired all at the same time. As a daughter of a retired Master Sergeant who served in U.S. Special Forces, I know what it's like to have a parent in the military. I serve as a commander right now, and it has its ups and downs. I have soldiers that I need to take care of, and that's why when I won Miss USA, I made my platform PTSD care and PTSD awareness and providing PTSD resources for our soldiers. What we do as military is very important. And when the days get hard, you have to think about days like this where you have organizations like Carnival Cruise Line and Operation Homefront that do what they need to do to appreciate our soldiers and the sacrifices that they have made and their families have made. I hope all of you have enjoyed this special event today as much as we at Carnival enjoy honoring you for your service. We thank you for spending your vacation with us and on behalf of the entire Carnival family, we hope you and your loved ones had an extraordinary time here on your Carnival cruise because you deserve it. Thank you. She's cool. She is cool. Uh, Mardi Gras family, I just want to say a big thank you to all of you for coming here today. Just spending 45 minutes of your cruise to make I am sure one or two of you feel a lot more uh, 
love than you might have felt for a while. I just want to say thank you to you all. If you do want to head over to Heroes Bar, I'll be wandering over there as well myself very shortly. It's on Decade Aft. But the one thing I would like to say is thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for being amazing. And if I get a chance to say hi, I'm going to run like a gazelle to the top of that stage. And I would love to see... Oh, wait there. I didn't see you there. Come on forward. I want to try and get a big group picture here before we say goodbye. So, let's get a good group picture because this is the most full this theatre of us has ever been. So, smile. You're on camera. I don't know, actually, no, keep your mask on and smile underneath your mask. You can smile, we can tell by the eyes you're smiling, we can tell. You get one? It's so many of you here, we have to take three different pictures. What a great problem to have. Mardi Gras family, thank you for being here today. Thank you for joining us, and we appreciate you. Thank you for being here for Veterans Day. I'm going to run like a gazelle to the top of the stairs and I try and get there to say goodbye to as many of you as possible.